Buckle Up Buttercup new socio shit just dropped. The main big feature this time is remote procedure call, but we'll get to that in a moment. So for quite a long time, there was an issue with uploading large files, so above four megabytes, because I was spreading function arguments and I was reaching the argument limit in JavaScript. Turns out they have that. So now this has been fixed with a much more sensible approach. No more file size upload limits. Woo! So now there's better SQL parsing for the tables. Uh, so for each SQL verb individually, instead of having this one large regex that I used to have, that would try to cover all the cases. And now this actually follows the spec of at least SQLite 3. Also, if this drop verb is noticed, then Socio will automatically unsubscribe all the clients from any queries with this table. This also means that I wrote up a bunch of tests and they are all passing for all the different edge cases and whatever and all the different verbs. Less bugs, amazing, cool. On the TypeScript side, I painstakingly annotated all the different message data objects that are sent across the network. So now less bugs, cool. I also transitioned to this uh, hook definitions uh, dictionary here. And with this nice neat syntax here, you now get really nice functions, signatures, annotations, whatever for the hooks. And this also is very nice that it works in this way as well. You get the, also the message kinds are now actual enums instead of just being strings. And I've also removed the error kind. So now everything is mostly done through the result and that contains a success flag. So the server has now more parameters, like the DB object no longer is mandatory. So you used to have this query thing, but uh, you might not actually use the SQL side of Socio. So this would be just annoying to have to write this up. So now you don't have to. There's this flag about sending sensitive error messages to a client. So whenever an error has happened on the server side, that error message might contain sensitive information like file paths on the server and God knows what else. So by default, this is off, but just turn it on in your dev environments for easier debugging. Hooks now can just be straight up defined with the in the constructor itself. So it's just easier this way, which also means that you no longer need to register the hooks with the register function. It is now just a dictionary and you can see all the available hooks there. It works the same on the client and server side now. Also for security reasons, there's now a list of the verbs that you want to allow. So for example, like select. This is also an embarrassing one. Turns out for a long time, the client wasn't properly being notified of the connection ending or something happening to it. So now this is handled gracefully and uh, the proper hooks are now being called. Now for errors, you can also know where the error happens. So on the server side or on the client or on a foreign client, because we have RPC now, we'll get to that in a moment, hold it. On the client side, socioprops now have a new syntax. By utilizing JavaScript's uh, proxy objects, I was able to abstract away the managing of subscription, um, uh, the get and set of the prop all behind this proxy object automatically for you. So now, as long as your prop is registered as a regular JavaScript object, then you can use it on the client side as a regular JavaScript object. So the getters, setters, all this is automatically synced across all clients when you do these operations. Very neat, cool, amazing. However, there is a caveat with Svelte's reactivity system because you're not doing assignments to the object itself, but properties of it, Svelte doesn't track that. So here's the old way. You can see I can increment, decrement the number and it's synced. But with the new way, it doesn't quite work. Uh, except the value is actually pushed to the server. So when this increments, it actually knows that it was a three and it incremented to four. And so if you refresh it, it the values are actually there on the server. However, with Svelte 5, the new state rune fixes this because it can track deeply nested properties of objects. Client sessions can also now identify themselves as some kind of unique name. If it's not unique, the server will reject it. So be careful about that. Persistent connections will keep their name. Once the connection has identified itself, all the logs will actually show that name next to its ID so that it's easier to read the logs. This identifying is useful because now you can actually discover the other sessions that are on the server currently. So you can see here the client identified itself as main and then it got an object of all the connected clients uh, organized here by ID by default. For convenience, you can also specify the return object should be organized by the names as the keys of the object or as just an array of all the objects. You can see here by name as array or the default is by ID. So on the server side, you can also now send to clients or emit to clients uh, by their ID or unique name. It's just a list, a uh, mix of either of those. And then finally, the RPC feature. This allows a client to ask either the server or another client to execute 
one of their functions by name with arguments specified, as long as the arguments are JSON serializable. And then whatever the server or other client returns will be returned to this client as a return value. This includes executing class instance functions on the other client or on the server as well. So the built-in ones that you have on the class or in a special defined dictionary of functions that you want to allow access to. Um, so here we can see a client sending an RPC call to the client ID and you can get this through the discovery or whatever else. And then it's gonna be executing this hello function by name. And here it is defined on the dictionary by name. And it's gonna be executing it with these args. And then the receiver of this call, if they have allowed it, also gets to see which client is trying to call this function. And then whatever you return here will be passed back here and awaited in the original client. The same thing goes for just the server. There's just less hops in the middle. There are hooks both on the server side and client side of how to intercept and do whatever you want with these calls. There are also hooks for the discovery and identify. And of course the client has to allow the RPC to be run on it. And the server has to allow the RPC as well. By default, these are both false for security reasons. And that is it for this devlog. It's been a couple months and the development of Socio is now a little bit slow. I'm mostly just adding new features that I think are useful for my other projects that I'm using Socio for. For example, my music player Muse, which I might demonstrate in a future video of how I can make my custom music player be controlled by any device connected to my local Wi-Fi network which is very cool. Thanks for watching and please support Socio. I really like this library. I believe that it has a lot of great potential to change the web and I hope you do too. Have a great 2025.